All right, friends, so today's video is about air conditioning. And really, it's not about that air conditioner because if that air conditioner is running, it means the good for nothing man unit that I put in seven years ago finally took its final crap on me. And that's what happened. So I'm gonna replace it. That's another video. I'll get into why it died. Oh, well, hell, I'll just tell you that the compressor died. Uh, and the, um, when I tried to get it running, the refrigerant leaked out through the terminals. It went pop and all the refrigerant flew out the back of the terminals. Yeah, I was not happy about that, but whatever. Uh, and the repair costs were more than replacing the unit. So yeah, that's why I refer to it as good for nothing man. And that wouldn't have fixed the efficiency issues. So I decided it's never gonna happen to me again. And after the ice storms in Texas last year, I also wanted to have a backup unit. So today's project is installing the backup unit, which is gonna replace that. And by the way, that thing over there, I call it a window rattler. It's a 14,000 BTU unit. It is keeping my whole 2,300 square foot house cold because I am spray foam insulated. It's keeping the house like 75, 78. That's not where I normally keep it a little, I normally keep it 74, 72, but it was 96 yesterday. So if the fact that it's 75 in here, I'm freaking impressed that a basically one ton window unit can keep my house comfortable when it's 96 out. That's crazy. But anyway, so let's get back to what we're doing. So I'm gonna put in a um, inverter uh, mini split in my bedroom. It's a one ton unit, it does heat and cool. That gives me the ability to heat and cool the house with a small backup generator. I don't wanna buy a Generac. I owned a Generac many years ago. It was an absolute certified piece of shit. And I don't wanna own another certified piece of shit. Um, I went to run that generator. Uh, it was a 15,000 watt generator and I tried to run a, uh, a welder on it that was well below its capacity and it completely shorted out something in that generator and I had, it took two months to get it fixed under warranty. I was not happy. So anyway, let's, let's get back to the thing. So I'm installing an Olmo Alpic Eco Series unit. The only thing I don't like, and, and this is a Medea unit. This is a Medea private label. So anytime you see the term Goldfin, you know that you are dealing with a Medea unit because Goldfin is a trademarked, uh, it's a trademarked and patent thing. The only thing I don't like is this eBay seller has tried to intimidate everyone into not thinking there's a warranty. They've got this bullshit that uh, you have to be a licensed HVAC professional. I got news for you. In Texas, homeowners are allowed to do their own refrigeration work. It's completely legal in Texas. So under the law, I can install my own AC unit. Now I do have my EPA 608 and 609, so I am certified to handle the refrigerant. But in Texas, the law flat out says I can do my own refrigeration work. So to the eBay seller, kiss my ass, you do owe me a warranty because I am allowed under the law to install this equipment. And I know what I'm doing and I've done about a dozen of these. So anyway, let's look at the unit itself. Yes, there are other projects in staging here. So this is the unit, it's not very big. What I'm gonna focus on this morning is installing um, the indoor unit. I'm waiting on the outdoor, uh, I'm waiting on the drill bit to arrive from Amazon. I'll put links in, the, in there to tools. So I am using uh, some Nylog uh, Blue. Nylog Blue is made from PoE oil. That's what the manufacturer says. It's completely okay. It's just a flare sealant. I've used refrigerant oil in the past. My mini splits work just fine. I have one that is, pushing 15 years and it's still keeping my garage ice cold and it's been moved. So, but yeah, this isn't a Fujitsu, it's a Medea. I'll be happy to get 10 years out of it. And, and again, it's just a backup unit for me. Uh, it's worth a thousand dollars to me not to ever have to run a window rattler in my house. Um, and I can run this on a generator. Uh, that thing over there uses more electricity than my three ton good for nothing man system. Anyway, so let's get started. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, my bedroom is a little bit messy, but it is what it is. I own it and that's what matters. So the unit's gonna go up in this corner 
And uh, before anybody makes snide remarks, those are temporary bedside tables. I plan to build something. I've just been delayed by uh, circumstances for a little while. And it just is what it is. So I think that's where this is gonna go. I'll be right back. Okay, so I brought the unit in and set it on my bed. This cover needs to be washed anyway, so it's not a big deal. So the way these disengage is you pull down like this, and then you lift up. So they snap in, that's the top, and there's quite a bit of flexibility here, so I'm gonna pop these. Don't, don't over pull this, this is all plastic, it's fragile. But this thing has a fair amount of give in how it mounts. So that's pretty good. Um, but for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with it centered so and it goes in the reverse and I'm, i need to take some critical measurements on the sides to see where exactly it's going to go because really i want this out the back and that's going to go in this corner so i need to know how far this hole is going to be and how far the wall is so let me get a tape measure and i'll get that information okay so i'm going to use a tape measure I thought about a pencil in here. Yeah, I did. A pencil and a uh, tape measure. So let me see if I can get this close enough where you guys can see what I'm actually doing. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to put this up on the bed. And then I think you guys can see. So we need to know a few things. So let's start with, we're going to blueprint the unit. It is, we're going to call this 32 inches wide. All right, and then the spacing between holes is 31 and 3 sixteenths. No, can't be. Thirteen and a quarter. Always double check your measurements. And then spacing from the end is five and a half and ten. All right, so that tells me, and then this needs to be approximately an inch up. All right, so that gets us what we need to know. Um, we might as well go ahead and note this number, although it's really not important. That's eight and a half. Okay. So this is all gonna get reversed when we actually start to apply this. But first, the next thing we gotta do is we gotta mark on the wall what we need. And we need six inches of clearance above it. So that's easy. So let me, um, let me reposition and we'll start doing some stuff here. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna do this this way. Uh, I think. That's gonna, yeah, that's gonna be decent. Um, so, we need six inches of clearance, so that puts us down below there somewhere for the top of this thing. Uh, I'm making a really tiny mark because I just don't want a whole lot of marks. Uh, let me go get a, a, a stud finder. I believe I can't find this damn thing. What the 
hell. There it is. All right, so I'm gonna use my Bosch GMS 120. Now, I know there's a lot of people that don't like this. Uh, they don't like it at all, but it works really well and it works really well in spray foam homes. It works with double layers of sheetrock and it works in commercial and that's why I actually bought it. So you wanna turn it on, let it come up to stuff, and then I recommend testing it in places where you know you have something. So we know that there's electrical and a stud either here or here. So let's figure out. So we'll start in nowhere land. And you know what? I'm gonna turn that light off. So we have power here on the side of the stud. And guess what? That's where we expect to find it. It's warning us, but we also have a stud. So it's not on the left. And normally if you go past these, it'll tell you. So it thinks the stud is right here. Mm, I think it's off a little bit, but yeah, it still agrees with me the stud's there. And I happen to know the stud is right there. And that's fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get up here and we're gonna mark out where the studs are on our six inch line. So I've gotta stand on the, I get fired step. And fortunately I can't fire myself. And then I'm gonna come into the wall a corner. I know there's a stud in the corner, but I also know there's a stud out here because this used to be, uh, actually this has always been part, uh, no, this used to be a closet right here. So there's no telling what's in here. So I normally like to go past these and come back. And then I'm gonna put a stud mark there. I'm gonna make a circle. I know there's a stud here somewhere. Uh, you guys probably can't see this. So I know there's a stud somewhere in here, but it's not giving me, it's not wanting to give me a good reading. So I'll come down a little bit. All right. So it thinks my stud is right here. All right. So I would have been off an inch, but that, that's okay. That's good enough. All right, and then we need to know where, there should be one over here about six inches. All right, we know we got one here. And I agree, this, this can be a little bit sketchy to use, but it, nothing works on spray foam walls because they don't have the density changes these things like. So we got one there. And it thinks there's another one here. Mm, it's very possible, because there used to be a, a closet right where I'm standing. Okay, so. Now let's see where that takes us because this tells us kind of where, what we're looking at. So I'm gonna unclip this bracket because mounting the bracket is really the first thing you need to do as an installer. And some of you may think, oh, I'll start outside. No, no, don't start outside because unless you're going to make your own line set, which I have the tooling to do, but I, I don't really wanna do that if I don't have to and I want a short line set on this unit because I'm gonna mount it on the outside wall. Um, so that puts us basically in this neighborhood. And what we gotta ask ourselves, if we come over five and a half inches, are we okay? And maybe, maybe is the answer. 
So I need to see how far am I? I'm close. So I probably need to move this over to here. And let's see, we had 10 inches from the center of the bracket out to the wall, so we're fine. We'll, line, we'll wind up with uh, a couple inches overhang, that's fine. Where does five and a half put us? Five and a half. We're well clear of the stud, that's what we want. We don't wanna be, we wanna really be in the middle of the studs. Um, and then, so this is, this is approximately where it's gonna go. Um, so let me go get another tool. I'm gonna go get a little level to put here so that I can level this when I put it in. And I gotta get the little sheetrock anchors. This unit weighs 22 pounds, so you really can use sheetrock screws to put this in. And when I say sheetrock screws, I mean sheetrock hanging screws, the kind you would anchor a picture to. Um, and they will be just fine for that. And we're gonna put six of them in here and, and that'll be okay. So we're gonna start with these. Uh, and we may actually add more than that because I want it on here good. And I know this sheet, I put this sheetrock in so I know it's in here right. Um, so I'll be right back. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clip this level to it and this will help me to get this unit leveled. And remember, there's arrows that point to up. Now, it's always great if you have six hands or a helper and I don't. I don't have six hands and I don't have a helper and I'm not from Marvel Comics, so yeah. But these are the screws I'm gonna use. I'm really fond of these. These are really good for shear loads in drywall. And to make up for not having several hands, I'm gonna put three of these in my pocket to get through the first two. If I had put just two in my pocket, I wouldn't be able to do this. And then it just helps that I have a stool there. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna double check everything. And uh, I don't think I marked where I wanted this, so now I've got to remeasure it. That was a stupid mistake. And that was something that you could easily avoid yourself. So the factory manual calls for 5.1 inches, but I thought it was five and a half, so I'm, I'm okay with either or. So that puts us in the clear here, and then 10 still leaves us, so we're, I think we were over a little bit, and um, I think that's actually fine right where it is. I know, I just said I should measure it, and then I'm not, but, um, and then I'm gonna come down a little bit because six inches is my clearance minimum. There's a little bit of overhang on this, and I need some pivot room, so I'm gonna come down to basically right there, all right? The first screw is not super critical, um, and hey, remember what I said about making sure it was right side up, upside down? Yeah, I'm about to install it upside down. So we will flip it around. And this is a magnetic level, so it will catch it. And again, I'm gonna just stay down here and I'm in this general spot here. All right. And now for my next trick, I'm, I'm focused on holding the screw at this point. All right, so that gets us in. Now what we need to do is come back and level. So if you were mounting to the studs, which I'm not, um, you could uh, you have some wiggle room here. And, and again, I'm, I'm not concerned about it because the unit weighs 22 pounds, all right? It, it will be fine. You can support 50 pounds on sheetrock uh, vertically like this. All right. You don't want to torque it until it quits spinning. You just, you know, now I'm going to put several screws in here because I, I do want it, I, I do want to feel like it's secure, but I don't need to, I don't necessarily need to be in the um, studs. 
So, and at this point, I'm just gonna add some extra screws and this gives me extra purchase power and splits my load. So right now I have six, so I'm down to four pounds per screw. Four pounds is well more than enough for what one of these screws can support. And to illustrate my point, you know, this tool weighs three or four pounds, so the screw has no problem. It would be actually rather difficult to pull it out. I'm not gonna do it because I put all this sheetrock in and it was a lot of work. I'm not, I'm not gonna kid you. I installed 7,000 square feet of sheetrock in this house. I uh, had some help from day labor. Uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, now I would like to see some more screws up here, so I'm gonna add them because pull away is gonna be a problem, mostly in the top, and I've got a couple extra screws and this will get rid of them. There's not much I can do with two screws. Now, part of the strategy for this installation as a backup unit is to uh, allow it to blow down the hallway into the center of my house. And that'll keep the rest of my house, you know, acceptably cold. So this is perfectly level and it is really important on an interior, on an interior uh, unit, it's really important that this be level because there's a very slight slope inside and it needs to drain and it's not going to drain if it ain't level. Um, it will leak and you'll have problems and um, so this is, this is perfectly level and it's secure. I mean that's 10-15 pounds of force, 10-15 pounds of force. I'm actually starting to bend the bracket. It ain't going nowhere. So we'll do a test set at this moment because really we can't do much until we have the, the, the next part of this is Yeah, so there you go. Now, getting it off, and, and I'll show you what this looks like. So that's what this how this unit's gonna be. And again, you wouldn't normally mount them in the corner, but I have this secondary use for this, and you know, it's not even moving. The only thing I really don't like is they put a stupid sticker on the unit that's really hard to remove. Uh, so this will blow down the hallway and into the rest of my house. Um, it, it will require using a fan to circulate the air, but again, this is a backup unit designed for emergency use. So at this point, we're going to have to pull this off, and to pull it off, you come up in here, and there's two little finger holes, you do just what you saw me do. Alright, now you also have, this is how you clean your filters. And you'll, you'll need to open this, you know, this is where you clean your filters on these. So the filters, uh, it's like a window unit, they pop out and they're washable and they go back in. Uh, now, it's gotta be an Asian thing. They included some little charcoal nonsense that's supposed to clip in somewhere. Uh, when I bought my Fujitsu units back in 2007, they had Apple, Apple you know, nonsense in there. Um, I, I don't think it does anything. It's supposed to be some kind of anti-mold. Um, so we will be undoing this when we get to the electrical section, but we're not to electrical yet, so we're gonna leave that closed. There's a override button here, and then that's your control panel, which I'll show through on this side to show you what you got. And again, you just, these little holes here, you put your fingers up and you just pull down, and then the unit lifts and lifts off. Now, I'm making this look easy, but again, remember I've done a dozen of these and this is not my first rodeo. So the next thing we're gonna need to do is locate the hole and we'll need to drill that. Now, I don't, I don't have the, the bit here yet, so we'll see when Amazon gets it to me. In the meanwhile, I gotta go to Home Depot and get some stuff anyway. So I'm gonna go to Home Depot and get, I need some uh, masonry uh, screws uh, for the outside portion of this and I need a little bit of electrical stuff. So I will be back.
So inevitably, there's going to be some HVAC contractors who dispute that I'm allowed to do this work legally in Texas. So I just want to come to you uh, to the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation webpage. So you can see right here, and it is purchasing guidelines for suppliers. Basically, this is who they can sell to. And there's some stuff for licensed contractors. They got to have a license. But when it comes to exemptions, the following individuals are permitted by law to perform air conditioning and refrigeration work without holding a license. Homeowners are exempt from purchasing requirements of the state, but not from the EPA. So that means as long as you have your 608 or 609, you're legal to buy and install your own air conditioning system in Texas. Now that doesn't mean that carrier is going to sell to you, but it does mean that you know this nonsense with you have to be a, a, a certified HVAC contractor to install it to have a warranty that, that really doesn't hold water in Texas. You are allowed by law to install your own systems. Uh, you need to know what you're doing. And before anybody starts throwing rocks that does HVAC work, I want to remind you that I often say as a code certified inspector, the HVAC stands for has violations and concerns because I'm going to be honest, I see very, very few systems that are installed correctly without code violations. Almost all of them have something wrong with them. Almost all of them have air leaks and it just is what it is. So no rocks shall be thrown. All right, it's a little later in the day and I'm ready to start uh, installing the mini split again. I was waiting on a couple of special drill bits from Amazon uh, and I'll show those to you in just a second. So in order to drill a pilot hole, the wall is about 10 inches thick. I needed a 12 inch quarter inch wide drill bit. This is a pilot hole so I can find the hole on both sides. And then to drill through the masonry, I needed a coring saw or a hole saw and you know home depot this drill bit is like 20 or 30 dollars and on amazon it was nine dollars okay if it only works once i don't care i usually can't find them after a couple months and then same thing on this i mean this at home depot is a hundred dollars and on amazon it was like 20 bucks so whatever um now i am using my harbor freight sds drill if you don't know what an sds drill is it is almost a drag hammer, but a drill on steroids. And they just, they kick ass. You can put all sorts of different bits in them. They have a heavy duty shank that holds the bit so it doesn't spin. They're really easy to work with. Um, let me grab it and I will show you how it works. So here's my SDS drill, as you can see, it's a big ass drill. And basically the way these work is you pull down on this and then it just it slips in so it's it, i can't uh, maybe you guys can see it so then it locks in and once it's locked in it's locked in so what i'm going to do is i've marked the hole it's 5.6 inches this is a b style there's an a and a b style bracket and this is b it's 5.6 over and 1.8 up and it calls for it to be a quarter inch lower on the outside than it is on the inside. So, you know, that is that, okay? Not this, not that, not that. That is level and a hair higher. And it's a good idea to know what you're drilling through, what's on the other side. And again, earlier in this video, I watched the, or I, you know, check for wires. So this will either be really exciting or probably not. Oh, and this drill is loud. So as I said, it just needs to be a little higher. Oh, it's in jackhammer mode. So let's put it in. There we go. So let's go see what we did. Now the real magic question is, where exactly is it? And what I was afraid of is it would blow a giant hole in the wall. That could have been it, but I don't think so. Um, it should be 
in this area somewhere. All right, I'm probably gonna have to go stick the drill through to find it. I mean, and if it's there, it's there. So let me go stick the drill through and figure out where it's at. Cause I don't remember there being a hole in my concrete. Man, I, I hope I didn't hit exactly right in the middle of a crack. It should be, okay, it could be that. That's a real good candidate. Damn, that's, that's really high too. Let me go see, let me stick the drill bit through. So it is this, um, and it's behind here, which isn't necessarily the end of the world. This, this will cut very easily, it'll drill very easily. Um, I really wish it hadn't spalled this. It blew out part of the brick, but that, that's okay, it'll, it'll work. So let me go get the drill and we'll get set up on this side and we'll start coring it. So on second thought, I think I'm gonna drill on the inside first because if I drill on the outside first, there won't be anything left of this bit. And I need to go ahead and get a clean hole on the inside and then I can go on the outside and just, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a mess on the middle of the wall. Um, this is gonna be something of a mess anyway. trash can. So we're through on the outside, on the inside. Now we gotta go to the outside and finish. Okay, so we're gonna get set up here. I gotta plug the drill in. Um, and then we're gonna start uh, doing it to it. Uh, let me go get a screwdriver. I got some crap to get out of the drill bit. Okay, so first things first, I gotta get up here find it again that's right here and I'm too too close to it right now Not a big surprise. All right. I'm gonna go get a Sawzall and notch this. I'll be right back. All right, so let's see if we can... No, that's not gonna work real well either. All right. 
So hardy board's actually pretty easy to deal with. It may not be the prettiest, but that will get it clear. And I nicked this uh, conduit, but that's really not a big deal because the conduit is, uh, it's got ethernet cable in it, so there's no danger there. Let's see if we can get this to drill. You're essentially grinding your way through the rocks or brick. Or in this case, just punched a hole in it. Now this is old, cheap brick. And at this point, I've got a hole. That's all I really care about. I don't care that it's dropped into this huge air gap back there. It would be better if it wasn't there, but it doesn't really matter. I can get the line set through, so let's move on. So it was interesting. There was a yellow jacket or wasp nest underneath here, and I had to exterminate it. Uh, if I hadn't been working in this area, I would have just let it be, but I'm not in the mood to be stung. It's time for this to go up there, but one of the things that's a real challenge when you install these is fishing the wire through there. So I'm going to attach the wire to the unit before I put it up there so that I don't have to deal with it later. And then I'm going to start washing my bed because I have all sorts of dust over and that's an all afternoon project. All right, so uh, again, I, I gotta wash the whole bed and all the covers on it anyway, so I'm not, I'm not super bent about uh, dust on it at the moment. Um, I do need to take this off to gain access to the back. All right, so. Take that off that off and then there is a box behind here that has to be opened and I'm going to organize these so that I can keep track of the screw which screw went to what And now I gotta figure out what these screws are for. And all right, there's a clamp here. These are normally uh, something of a pain in the ass to, to do. Let me go check the manual. I, I think this cover is gonna have to come off. This is a 120 volt system, so uh, black and white and red and they don't tell us what they think the colors are for so green is going to be ground black should be hot and white should be neutral and that leaves red and we've got one three in ground let me go get a flashlight i can't see shit in there actually i've got one right here so red black yellow and then ground so i guess we'll do red black white and ground and see what happens. Uh, they say to work through the back of the unit and to pass the wire up through the front. I just, I think the front has to come off this and in case you can't tell, I've, this is not my first rodeo. Let 
What I will say is you have to be extremely careful because if you don't know where the clips are, it's real easy to break this stuff. And um, there's essentially no warranty on it. And I don't know that having an HVAC license would make you any better at the piece that I'm engaging in right now. Okay, so. I um, have repaired these. And again, I know more than the average bear when it comes to these things. This is the part that I don't like to take apart. So we're going to go ahead and take these screws off to open this wire clamp all the way. And I'm going to see if I can slip this through from the side. So it says to feed it through underneath, but I don't, I mean, that's smooth, but. Mm. Yeah, this looks exactly like an aircon unit that I had to repair one time. So I can't really see where the hell this is supposed to actually go through. And that's, all right. Not 100% sure what I'm hung up on. But again, I can't. All right, there it is. So I got it through. So now we're just going to work with it. So nothing damaged. So we'll start with the black wire and let's see what it's gonna to take to get these in here.
and I'm not sure that the colors are as important as the terminal positions and hopefully the colors repeat on the other side. So this one calls for red to be first. Man, this is really a difficult. Oh, so I should have put this side in. All right, so let's do it again. So, seeing as we don't need to remove this front cover, we're going to go ahead and put these screws back in. That will simplify the adventure. So I guess uh, Medea uses gold anodizing, which they refer to as gold fin, which is fine, whatever. Okay, and I'm going to pause, I'm going to go get something. I normally would tell you that my house is plenty bright, but I, I just can't see enough. So these terminals are, again, this is just really difficult to work on because of the, the ergonomics of it. I mean, if you're going to design something this crappy, you might as well go ahead and just make it a plug. And I can tell you, if it's got connectors this small, it doesn't draw a lot of power. They call for a 20 amp circuit on it, but I can pretty much tell you, look at these connectors. Well, maybe the outside unit uses more power. I mean, but the inside unit, it doesn't use squat. Because if it did, uh, you just wouldn't see what you're seeing. These are itty bitty little connectors. And you got to fiddle with them to make sure they're engaged with the uh, terminals. And then you should pull on them to make sure that they're secure. And then this, I'm going to draw back up in here to make sure that I get a good bite on it. I mean, it can, it can be tucked down in here and coiled in like this. But I want to secure this clamp. It's set up for two wires, a power and a control. But they only supplied one wire with it, and it's their install kit. So Medea also does uh, Cooper and Hunter.
Now, most professionals would use a screw gun on this, and that has a great potential to damage the unit. That's precisely why I don't. I will say they did take the time to shield this. Um, that's the whole reason that this is like this. The real travesty for me is we just don't make this stuff in the United States anymore. It's not that we can't. It's that, you know, our Wall Street is obsessed with easy money and CEOs want to make a king's ransom and screw all the people. And that's just a crooked, immoral, and unethical way to do business. But that's the United States, and that's what we prioritize these days. So, we need to make sure these are all clipped in. I'm going to go ahead and... This will fix itself. That's on a stepper motor, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to put the air filters in. Okay. And now... personally think this should be secured. I don't like having a cable going through metal without it being secured. If that was anything else, I wouldn't really worry about it. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So this cable goes through here. Now this isn't sharp, but I'd, that really should be secured. So I'm going to see if I can secure it. And actually, I know I can secure it because the solution to this is to unbolt it. Well, you know what? It's not a matter. Uh, it's not going to let me unbolt it. And the reason I can't unbolt it is this plastic is in my way. And the only way to get that out is to break it. And I don't see a reason to do that, so I'm not going to. So I'm going to see if I can thread this down here and if it will engage the way I want it to. Yep, it will. Okay, so now all I got to do is tighten it and that's going to be its own special pain in the ass. But this has to be twisted out anyway. And that gives me access back here. I'm willing to bet you that 9 out of 10 of these that are installed by licensed contractors do not have this done because this is one of the most common things that I write up as an inspector when I'm inspecting AC units. One of the single most common things that they don't do is protect the wires where they go through metal. And it may not seem like a big deal, but it can lead to shorts and house fires. And there have been some pretty big settlements over it. And, you know, whether it starts a fire or not isn't really my issue as an inspector. My job is to call out safety issues and workmanship issues where the workmanship just isn't very good. And I normally refer to HVAC as has violations and concerns because the vast majority of it does. And that's good enough. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to prep this. So we gotta take all the 
mess out of it. And then we're gonna feed this through here so that when we put this up on the wall, all this goes in and we're done. A little more hassle here, but it'll be less hassle I don't know, I guess that's supposed to somehow go there. Anyway, I don't know, we're gonna put it on the wall and move on. These do not take that long to install if you are halfway on the ball. Um, but like I said, I've installed a bunch of them. I, I quite thoroughly resent being told that I have to be licensed to install this when that's not the requirement here. And so the next trick is to push this through. And again, this is where a second person can be a real help. But you can do it yourself as you see me doing it. There we go. And we're in, like Flynn. So now we go to do the outside. And uh, by the way, that's the easiest way to install that. Even though it doesn't look like it's easy, trust me, that's the easiest way to install that. I damaged one of these when I wanted to run the refrigerant lines up. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've dealt with all sorts of shit with these. They're great units though. Um, it's, it's a very, very sound concept. It's extremely efficient because there's no ductwork. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that sitting in the sun to warm it up because it'll, it'll be easier to deal with once it's warmed up. And now I've got to figure out where 10 feet is. Yep, so this is where I wanted to mount it, um, so it'll be it'll be just fine. I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna come across here and bring it down in this area somewhere. That gets it away from my bedroom and makes it quiet. Um, so, next thing's next. Uh, I need to go get the wall mount for it and get started on installing that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna install this out here and it mounts like this. So anywhere in this neighborhood should be just fine. We're gonna use that spot there.
that brick's pretty soft. But it'll do it. This is a sheer load, so it's not a big deal. I'm gonna go get some washers for these. Um, I'll be right back. Okay. So the washers will make this. You do not want to over tighten those, it will pull out. And these just slide into here. These get adjusted later. And if practical, I may, um, yeah, let me go measure these because I may, I may add bolts to this because uh, these are really quite wimpy and It might be okay. Um, so the next step is to get the outdoor unit up here. And this really would go smoother with two people because it's big. And really want to mount it out here so that it has airflow behind it. Yeah, let me get a ladder, see where I go. All right, well, let's have some fun here. The yeah, unit's not that heavy. As evidenced by the fact that I got it up here by myself. Maybe 40 pounds. Now I gotta figure these out. All right. Let me go get some thread lock. I don't trust these. So I have a little fork in the road. These came with the uh, kit and these came with the machine from the manufacturer. So these are much softer and more pliable. These are hard and rubber. Uh, I think I'm gonna start with the ones that came with the... Um, So what we gotta spread this out and get up here to look at it. Oh, and 
these washers are such high quality. They even got one that didn't punch out. I'll figure that out later. So the most important thing to do when you're doing something like this is to get both sides locked in. And there's no weight on this side. All the weight's on the compressor. Not really a surprise there. But this makes it mechanically sound. It's, it's very unlikely to jump off once, it's, once it, you've got these threaded on. And then I can take a minute and adjust these. Now, as much as I would like to have it further out, um, the spacing on this says no, that's not going to happen. And that's okay, there's normally, this isn't, this isn't unusual. Uh, let me go find a, a washer to replace this. Half inch washer, it, it'll be just fine. All right, and now we're gonna cheat. Well, first we're gonna make sure all this looks good. Yeah, it does. Again, there's not much to these. that one in a minute here. So this foot jumped out from underneath. Uh, in the front, it, it's... Uh, It's a hole in the back, it's a slot.
And these don't have to be super tight. They just have to kind of lock it down. If you tighten them too much, it will eliminate the vibration dampening um, that these are capable of. If you don't tighten it down enough, it'll just rattle. So at this point, it's on there. Um, you know, I really don't see anything else that needs to be done here. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you can secure these, but in this particular case, this feels really secure. I don't, I don't feel like it's going anywhere. So the power's gonna come in here and the refrigeration is gonna come in here. Um, and I'm gonna run it over here. It is a 16 foot line set and an 18 foot wire set. And unfortunately, the wires, or the, I'm sorry, the lines, if they had made them both the same length, I wouldn't have any issues, but they made the vapor line just a little bit too um, short, and so it doesn't stick out of the wall. And I'm gonna have to pull the whole unit out in order to um, deal with it. And I'm not happy about that. Um, it's probably the most difficult situation I've ever faced with one of these mini splits because I'm going to have to stick the line set through from this side, tighten it, stick it back through, bend it without kinking it, and then come along here, come over here, make my bends, make my connections. Um, the good news is I can shorten this line set if I need to. Um, there's probably going to be a little loop here. I have the flaring tools, so it's not a big deal. I I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight. I really would like to have help for that. Um, you know, we'll see. I mean, I'd really like to have this one ton unit working. Oh, that's not tight. So let me tighten that one. There's just a lot of magic this could do for my house. And there's gonna be one on the other side of the house that's real similar to it. It'll be a three ton um, that'll do the central. But for now, I gotta make a decision on what I wanna do on the inside. So for better or worse, I've decided to try and do this myself. I'm quite rather annoyed because this is the worst possible configuration that I could deal with by myself. But um, I can get to it back here. So let me, um, first let me see if I have any wrenches that fit this. All right, good. It's a 17 millimeter. So we'll keep that up there and we'll use a quality adjustable wrench. It's actually a crescent brand wrench. Let me go feed the um, line set through the hole. All so if this lousy thing had been just a little bit longer, Ah, oh, shit, it slid out on me. All right, I gotta go fix it. All right, so we'll take the drain line, send it away, and we'll pull the insulation out of the way. And then I'm just gonna separate those a little bit because that will stop them from separating on me. That gives me a chance to get this plastic shit out of the way. And then I can look at the flare. So what I need to do now is unlock that one and I need a pair of pliers, so I'll bear it back. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab this and grab that. And it should be just that easy 
to unlock it. Nope. That is our nitrogen charge escaping. I had quite a bit of charge. Well, how about that? So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of nylog here. And I'm going to just spread it around with my finger. It's a nice thick refrigerant oil. And I gotta pull the. I need to do the same thing on this one. And there's not an issue with getting too much of it in here because this is literally refrigerant oil. Now, the bigger problem for me is getting these lined up. And this is something I would normally just have lots of room to do outside. <laughs> okay, so thing we want to do is get our adjustable wrench set for this. Alright, and then we're going to use the 17 millimeter to back up the brazed on flare. And that feels right. I'm going to be extremely unhappy if I have a leak here because it'll be a pain in the ass, but you don't want to over tighten it. it. It needs to have a firm amount of pressure, and that's it. Now, the other one will have to be dealt with on the outside. And the reason for that is that they didn't make this and this the same length. I actually, I might be able to scoot it out and just deal with it. Uh, let me try and do that. I'm going to fix it on the outside first. All right. Um, there's enough stick out on the outside. I'm going to deal with it on the outside because it's going to be a pain in the ass to do from in here. So I'm going to put this back together on the wall. And I will deal with it out there. So I'm going to button all this back up as best I can. And again, slide it all back through there and fight this fight from the outside. And it really shouldn't be a big deal. But as you see, sometimes it can be.
right, so I gotta go fix it from the outside and pull all this slack out. So I'll be right back. And I'm gonna leave it on because I think you guys can hear my stuff on the outside. Good. So I've got the drain tube. So I'm gonna get this ladder out and then I can get up here and look and see what's going on. The little uh, escutcheon for the tubing set fell apart. You know, I've seen milk cartons that were sturdier than this. I've also never used those before, so I'm not really worried about it. So the issue is um, I'm going to have to connect the other line set on the outside and then I'll come back in here and mess with this. Um, it's this insulation wrap that's hung up. So let's go outside and do that. All right, so what we got to do is deal with this. Uh, this won't be a big deal. This will be relatively straightforward. Put that in my pocket. I got to get this off. Make sure you close this lid when you are done with this stuff because otherwise it will leak everywhere with a capital E. I set it down for a second and it did exactly that. So normally what I like to do on these is line them up and then hand tighten them. I couldn't really do that on the inside. And then at this point, it should be relatively straightforward. I think this one's a 17. Yeah, it is. And then that's done. Come on, Crescent, let go. So, now the problem is these two don't want to line up. So we've got to split the, the pair of hoses. All right, 
I mean, they do get an A for effort. If they had made these the same length up here, this actually would have worked out pretty well. So now we've got to fix that foam and we'll have to go inside to do that. So you can see the foam isn't wrapped around here and it really needs to be or we'll get moisture in there. All right, so that ain't gonna stay. So we'll just have to put you guys down here. You can still see what I'm doing. All right, I gotta go outside and mess. See what I'm hung up on out there. I'll be right back. This makes me mad. I had this on here perfectly. Just absolutely perfect.
little piece of plastic that's in my way back here. There we go. I gotta still straighten it out on the outside. So this little piece of plastic popped loose. It's removed so you can run it straight out the back. Um, and the easiest thing to do in this situation was to break it off. Uh, if I had help, I could have probably saved it, but. <laughs> All right, so what needs to happen now is I need to straighten out these lines. That's part of the issue. And then that's part of the issue there too. So, and to do this bend, I need to go get some tools. I'll be back. So to do this correctly, I really should um, bring my bending tools out. But the problem with the bending tools is I can't, I can't get them in here to make the proper bend. So I'm gonna hand Oh, I might hand bend these. I mean, it really needs to come down like this anyway. The most important thing on these is to be gentle and slow. Take the insulation off when you make the bends and don't push it. And the reason you take the insulation off is so you can see what is actually happening. And then what you do is you work the insulation back on. this. One is going to do it, so two will. This is a temporary support until I can get a line set cover in place. thought about waiting until I could get the line set cover, but honestly, it's been too long since I've had a decent air conditioner. I've been running on a window rattler for a week or more. No, it's, yeah, it's been 10 days now.
Wow, that sucks. Was not expecting that. Okay, so now I gotta figure out what I wanna do with the extra line. Well, not really, because I know what I wanna do with it. I'm gonna cut it off and bring it back and flare it. Let me get a tape measure and see what I've got here for line set. It needs to be at least 10 feet. All right. So, yeah. There we go. Now, I have the benders, that's the funny part. I just don't feel like using them on this one. And if I mess the line set up, line set up it's, it's, that'll be my penalty. But I think I can get it in here and it looks okay. to this is not to bend these any more than you absolutely have to because they will work harden very fast and then it will be very difficult to bend them. So I think we need to cut this off down here. So let me go get my tools and let's make the cut. Okay, so we're gonna take this cover off. this cover really determines where things go. 
as expected. Service port, suction, liquid, power, power. So this can separate here. And I really wish they hadn't done this because this really limits the, it's just, it's just, it's very limiting. Um, so I've got my yellow jacket tubing cutter, seen better days. Let me get my knife, it's gonna, Actually, you know what? I could cut this even shorter. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, the efficiency of this unit is very closely related to the length of the line sets. So you really don't want the lines to be any longer than they need to be. Okay, so now we're gonna separate these out and make a nice clean cut. Let's pull this out. And one of the questions we have is how long is this? And we're gonna answer that question because I wanna know how long the line sets are. And this is the pretty much the way to find out. More importantly, I need this. this flare nut because it's going to go up on here and get flared out and you're going to see that magic here in just a second what did i do with the tape measure oh it's up there so it's seven and a half feet we had a 16 foot so we're eight and a half plus the foot there so nine and a half we're right on target so we're going to push this up there. That gives us just enough room. We'll peel it back to work on it. There is a deburring tool here that we will use very gently. All right, that's all we need there. Now we get to use one of my absolute favorite tools, which is this yellow jacket flare tool. And what's cool about this is you can swing this over, it will set the depth perfectly. And I've not used it with uh, Nylog, but we're about to. Because this is an extremely important point to lubricate the, the tubing. What I gotta do is get this cone lubricated. So we're gonna set this Oh, well, maybe it's not quarter. It says it is. It says quarter three eighths. So we'll 
try again. Oh, we got a mismatch, that's a problem. And I screwed up. The flare nut's out here. So I get to do it again. Nice flare. Wrong spot. So now what we want to do is compare their flare to mine. I think mine's a little short. I'm going to remake it. And I'm going to open this up so I have more room to work.
That looks good. I can just see it from here. It's a nice full flare. This is an expensive tool. Um, it's worth it. If you're doing any of this kind of work, it's definitely worth it. So we'll take a look at this factory flare and they're almost identical. A little bit of sharpness there on the edges, doesn't matter. That's going to recycling, so we'll throw it over there. millimeter mm, something just went oh it even came with extra flare nuts that's nice that's two sets of flare nuts and an example flare again nice not needed but nice um i'm gonna back i'm gonna go get something so i happen to own a yellow jacket hvac torque wrench because yes i know what the hell i'm doing most AC people don't use these. They should, but they don't. So we're gonna get this connected up here. First, we're gonna nylog the hell out of it. Well, actually, first we're gonna, we're gonna remove some of this because this is quite definitely in my way. And we'll tape that back later. It's flange, it's foot bolted, so it ain't going nowhere. There we go. Now we need to go figure out what this is. Five eighths. All right. Let me go look the torque up for that and get the uh, wrench. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we gotta figure out So we want it about here. Ok, 
Okay. So we'll deburr this. One of the things that's really neat about this tool is you just rotate the dies to get to the size you need. So you just spin it. And now we've arrived at 5 eighths, which is the die we need. When this is in for locking, it doesn't do anything. But when you slide this over, this little tooth comes out and that tells you where you need to be. Now we need to rip a bunch of that off and then double check. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this shorter. This will just make my life simpler. Okay. All right, so that's nice and lubed up. We're gonna bring it down here where we can get to it. Five eighths. Oh, that's three eighths. Hmm, okay, whatever. Next neighbor over. Uh, let us not make. Uh, we gotta fish that. that Gotta get the flare nut off here. So I tuck this back into the foam and that keeps it out of the way while I'm doing my flare operation. good. There's a little cleaner, but mine will still work. Every nice shot of lube. Now we need to go get the torque reading because we have the torque reading wrong. We have it for 5 eighths pipe, and this is 3 eighths. Mm 
So let me go get the torque reading. I'll be right back. All right, it is not 33, it is 18. So, here we go. And there we are. And at this point, it's ready to have a um, vacuum pump put on it. So I'm gonna go get my vacuum pump and we're gonna start pulling vacuum on the system because while I wire it, it'll get vacuumed down. Uh, let's put that in my pocket. I'll be right back. So we're not gonna charge anything, so we don't actually need, uh, that's a core remover, we don't need that. But what we do need is this. This is a very high precision um, why do we have a core remover in here? Can we use it as none? So, I don't know why I have a core remover in there. Um, If I remember right, yeah, that doesn't work. Let me go get my adapter. I, I have the adapter for that. So I've got my system hooked up. I've got an adapter for a mini split. They're all, they all have a weird port. So that's the adapter to a standard valve. It goes to the low side. I've got the vacuum pump hooked up on the big port. And then I've got a micron vacuum gauge here. And we wanna get down to like a 50 or 25. We're looking for a perfect vacuum. So we'll go ahead and shut that and start pulling a vacuum. And it very quickly reads 30 inches of, of vacuum, but now we're pulling down a real vacuum in the micron level. So we're at 1500. Pulling into a thousand. Pulling into 750. Uh, 
All right, that is looking really good. So we're, we're approaching 500. So we're at 500 microns. That means we've got a really good vacuum. So I'm gonna start wiring the uh, unit while, while that takes place. So I'm actually, I gotta go put tools away and get tools, I'll be back. All right, so I'm gonna take this cover off and it's got some nice sticky goop on it. I'm just gonna break that. All right, well, let's make some sense out of this. So I'm gonna have to go get some wire trimmers. I'm gonna have to trim this way back.
All right, all that's left at this point is to open the service valves. We are not. These are four millimeter. I'm going to open the high pressure one first. inside okay so the only things left to do is turn it on and there it is so we're gonna turn it down to 74 and we'll give it a second to come on it's silent as they always are let's see we want fan speed is on, cool is on, and I feel cool air coming out of it already. Oh, that's so nice. And yeah, I can feel cool air already coming out of it. So let's go see how loud it is outside. hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope it helps you with your projects and may all these manufacturers and dealers that say that you have to be licensed to install may they run out in traffic on a busy freeway